What's up everyone, Kawhi Crew here, here to react to the final episode of Vanitas No Carte Part 2. Last episode where we left off, we got Vanitas No Carte Civil War, pretty much. We got Noe versus Vanitas fighting off against each other because Vanitas wants to confront Mikhail, but Noe doesn't want Vanitas to confront Mikhail because Mikhail is holding Dominique hostage. Also, John has arrived to save Dominique, but unfortunately, she is still mind fucked. Uh, Dominique is still mind fucked. So, yeah, it looks like we, we will most likely be getting those two fight facing off against each other as well John versus Dominique. And so, yeah, and Mikhail has been pulling the strings behind the scenes, man. It's so messed up, but let's see where this all ends. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Alright guys, here we go, the final episode of Vanitas No Carte Part 2. Nah, no way. Oh no, he didn't do it, he didn't do it, did he? Nah, oh, very close. So close. Because he's your best friend. His wish. Also, what is Noe apologizing for? Oh, I guess that's serum more off. Uh, looks like things didn't quite l work out the way Mikhail wanted. So we have our present self uh, restricting her child self, huh? So Dami coming to her senses. Why are you listening to that loser? Oh no, she's losing herself!
Whoa, what the fuck? He killed all those people. Whoa. So he turned all those people into vampires, or were they original, originally vampires? Oh, you broke something. You made a little fucky wucky, Mikhail. Oh, what the hell? Whoa! Hey! Oh shit! So I guess her Dominique has finally returned to her senses. <laughs> yes, she is, John. Yes, she is. Although you're not too bad looking yourself. <laughs> We got Dominic the Ice Queen in action. What you gonna do, Vantas? Oh, he broke free. Oh. Hey, nice save, nice save. Hey, wait, isn't that... Wait. Wait a minute. Yeah, the grandfather. Whoa.
You know, I honestly can't tell if this is more or less scary than the form that we saw him, like, in previous times. That monstrous form with, like, pointy, sharp teeth. That sinister look, that much more, that sinister look that we've seen him before. But now we have him with, like, uh, I guess a more civilized look. And honestly, I don't know how I feel about this. Most likely. No, it doesn't. Yes, I'm, fear, I'm sure John feels the same way. <laughs> Woo! Perhaps... Mm, it looks like Grandfather is a little too out of your league as of this moment. He's a little too high leveled as of this moment. You guys need to get stronger before you can fight him. And of course, Mikhail cannot just die right here. <coughs> of course, the author plans on keeping him around. <laughs> Damn, Amelia knows Noe way too well.
Wait! How long have you been standing there? You weren't there before. I'm guessing he didn't come here for an apology over a cup of tea and biscuits. Or did he? I'm already guessing right now. It has to. I'm guessing it's either grandfather or the queen, because the, so far those seem to be the two most villainous characters, and yet most mysterious characters in the whole story. They definitely seem to be like the amalgamation of just plain evil. Like they're just. You could already. They could tell that they're they're just up to no good. And, and the way I, the reason I said Queen is because it's pretty much confirmed at this point that Nani and the like I think it was confirmed like back part part two was it that Nani and the in the um is connected to, to the Queen or something like that I'm I'm I think so I think it was hinted I'm pretty sure it was hinted I could be wrong though I think I was I think I'm wrong but I'm still, still sus suspecting the Queen. I know. I already know she's up to no good. She's not unconscious. She's not fully unconscious. She's not fully in a comatose state. Gay. <laughs> and once again, we are T. <laughs> even though that, even though that Vanitas will fall in love with Jean. And Dominique will most likely fall in love with Vanitas. Actually, no, she has already fallen in love with Vanitas. I mean, not Vanitas, no way. Um, that doesn't mean 
That the no way and Vantage ship is out of the question. Oh, this series is still teasing. It's still teasing. It's still teasing both ships. Good lord. You know, uh, I know a few, I've seen a few people, including my fellow live reactors, uh, say, you know, express their annoyance and displeasure with Mikhail. And you know what? I have to agree. Mikhail, there, there's, there is just nothing likable about Mikhail. <laughs> there he is, probably one of the worst characters in the whole series. Good lord. Every time he takes an L, I, everyone else takes a W. Every time he loses, I find a lot of pleasure in seeing that happen. Every time he suffers, I smile. What? Oh, that's good. So all those... Mm -hmm. You have a funny way of expressing that. So I guess all those characters impaled on icicles were okay in the end? Alright. Jesus Christ. Well, you got... Well, you gotta give the Fujoshi something. Because I'm pretty sure it makes up a good majority of Vantas no Karte's fan base. Well, how about you go on a date with John? Marry her. Oh yeah, I forgot that's your title. <laughs> You're a doctor. Yeah, I guess, I guess you are a doctor or something like that. Well, I guess the sun has come up. Hard to tell though, since there's all this cloud. Oh no, the sun's up.
Yep. The Venatus and Noe ship is definitely not out of the question. Alright, that is the end of Venatus no Carte part two. Alright, well, as usual, I'm gonna say my overall thoughts on just this episode, and then I'm gonna move on to my thoughts about this series, well, part two as a whole. So, what I think about this episode, uh, overall, pretty good finale. Um, pretty good finale. We got to. S we didn't get exactly get to see the Vantas no Carte Civil War that I had in mind, that I thought it was gonna lead up to. Um, of course, we still saw uh, one last encounter between Noe and Vanitas, but I thought Dominique and Jean were going to fight, but that wasn't exactly the case. Although, I am kind of glad that didn't happen. I hate to see my two best girls fighting against each other. But yeah... It was also nice to see Dominique uh, get some closure, I guess. Like, being a it seems like she is able to move on from her past and move past all the guilt that she felt all these years. Oh, that was a nice message. It was in French, though, so I don't exactly understand what it said. But I'm guessing it says something along the lines of, uh, thanks, like, thanks for all the memories. Like, thanks for the memories, like, thanks for watching Vanitas no Carte, or something like that. Um, but yeah. We got, uh, the end to Vanitas no Carte Civil War. We got Dominique getting the clothes she needs. We get to see Mikhail taking an L. You know, seeing all his plans just coming crumbling down in front of them. Ha, in front of them. However, we also got to see a surprise appearance from Grandfather as well. Who, of course, is looking, uh, I would say a lot shadier than we've seen him before. We actually got to see his real face, actually, so... And like I said, I still don't know if it's less or more, uh, creepy than the, his exaggerated, monstrous appearance. But, uh, but either way, it, it was a surprise to see him again, and I have no doubt, I would not be surprised at all if he turns out to be the main villain of this whole series. And near the end of the episode, we did get to see one last little moment between Vantas and Noe to appease the, Fujo the Fujoshis. But yeah, other than that, pretty good finale to it all. I will say though, I, I was... This series did prove me wrong in that I thought that we were gonna get Vantas and Mikhail's whole past. Like, ever since we jumped to Mikhail's whole past and we, you know, we see the appearance of a young Vantas, I thought, oh shit, is this it? Is this, are we finally gonna get Vantas' past? Is the whole thing gonna be revealed? Is his past no longer gonna be a mystery? Are the, cur the curtains finally gonna be pulled? But that is not the case, however, because there are still obviously a lot of gaps in Vantas' past. There's still a lot of things that we just do not know. I mean, I did give us some answers, but it still raised a lot more questions. So, yeah, for now, it looks like Vanitas' past and, and Mikhail's past still remains a big mystery and possibly one of the biggest mysteries in the entire series. Or should I say possibly the biggest mystery in the entire series. But yeah, other than that, pretty good finale to Vantas no Carte part... Two. As for what I think about this series as a whole, as for what I think about part two as a whole, honestly, it is more or less what you would expect from a sequel, like a part two to Vantas no Carte. Uh, aside from the introduction of new characters like uh, Chloe, Jean-Jacques, Mikhail, there wasn't anything that really, like, makes it stand out um, from part one. Like, there's not really anything about part two that makes it better or worse than 
part one. I mean, yeah, th those things I mentioned were nice, as well as the insight into Vanitas' past, which for the majority of part one was a huge mystery. And we did get some answers as to what the details of Vanitas' past are. That was great. But other than that, I wouldn't say it's better than part one because of that. Um, so, though, I did, I did enjoy part two. There were some things I like about it. For example, more great action, more of the great chemistry between Vanitas, Noe, Dominique, Jean, those four characters. And we did get to see some more great moments between Jean and Vanitas. In fact, I think we got some, we got some great, um, like, romance progression between those two as well in part two. Because in part two, we see Jean slowly realizing her feelings for Vanitas. So yeah, that was definitely great to see. And of course, the vice versa can be said as well with Vanitas finally realizing his own feelings for Jean. Like he finally realizes that, oh shit, I might be actually in love with Jean. I might be actually in love with the vampire. So yeah, that was definitely great to see. Uh, sadly, we did not see a lot of Dominique and Noe moments. I mean, yeah, it's pretty clear that Dominique is in love with Noe. He, she does have feelings for Noe. But the question is, does Noe feel the same about Dominique? I mean, we know they're childhood friends, but does he see her as anything more than that? But yeah, that's still, uh, that's, I guess you could say that's another big mystery in this series, besides Vanitas' past. But yeah, sadly we didn't get to see much of that. In fact, I don't think we got, we didn't get to see much of that in part, part one either. Although I think there was a little bit more Dominique X No Way in part one than there was in part two. Of course, that's mostly because Dominique didn't return until the second arc in part two. So like later into the series. It sucks, but... Well, what can you do? So, yeah, other than that, uh, that's pretty much what I liked about Fantastic Carte Part 2. More great action, more great characters, um, more of our favorite characters, great new characters as well, and of course some more adorable and sexy vampire moments, vampire romantic moments. Uh, as for what I don't like about Season 2, first of all, I not I don't really like the pacing um, in part two. I don't really like how they did certain moments in part two. Like there was a lot of stuff that happened in part two that I feel like the anime didn't really do a good job at, at explaining. I already kind of uh, expressed it. Like I say back in the, like the Chloe and John Juck arc. Like for example, the birdcage that. Uh, Chloe was trapped in for a while as to also as to how Jean-Jacques was able to bring Chloe back to normal after she was trapped in that big ass like alternate reality engine whatever I forgot or I forgot what it was called uh, but yeah and also the reason I brought up pacing is because like there was just so much like there are times in part two where it's like there's so much shit happening. Like, it leaves you confused. I mean, and while it is supposed to make sense, it's like, the way it's done, it just makes it seem like it's just a bunch of shit going on all at once. Like, episode one, for example. Like, we already know why why all that happened. Why the Beast of Javada was there. Uh, why Astolfo was there. Actually, no, we don't know why Astolfo was there, actually. He just appeared there for no reason. Yeah, we didn't really get much of an explanation behind that still. So yeah, that's a, I guess you can add that to the list of unexplained things in part two. Um, also as to why Nania appeared out of nowhere. Also why there was a knife that severed the chains to Vanitas' book. I mean, the reason for the Beast of Javadin, John's appearance and the knife, that was all explained. But the rest weren't, and to, to me, when like when I first saw episode one of part two, I was like, whoa, what the fuck was going on? Like it it seemed like to me it was just like a clusterfuck of events that really didn't make any sense whatsoever. 
And honestly, I didn't really like that. And that's the problem I... And I saw that in... In fact, this episode as well. Because we got... What's next? What, what, what do we get? Well, first of all, we saw Jean uh, come to her senses, unleashing her ice powers. And then... No, 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 no. So we saw Mikael uh, opening up his book, unleashing all those vampires, and then the book corrupt, being corrupted, and him turning, him being corrupted, and then Dominique coming back to her senses. She does her ice power things, and then Noah claws Mikael, and then Grandfather magically appears. Like, I guess, I mean, I guess there was nothing... I mean, that, 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 those secrets of events should make sense, but I don't know, it's just the way it was done, it's like, it's too fast-paced, like... You need to give the viewers time to comprehend these events, you know? Like, what's happening on screen. So yeah, also, I'd say another problem I had with this, with part two, was the timing and the comedy, of the comedy. And I think there was, this was a problem back in part one as well, like, there were some jokes... Like the, you know, like, you know those comedic moments with the, the chi, like, when the characters turn to chibi form. There were some moments where, like, yeah, the jokes did land for me, and, but then, like, most, a lot of times, it just didn't. Like, they really do sometimes, like, just happen out of nowhere with no build-up to it whatsoever. And there were something sometimes where it actually took, like, happened during, like, Moments that were supposed to be taken seriously, supposed that were supposed to be serious and meaningful moments, and having those types, that type of comedy happen in those moments, it kind of detracts from the whole tension, you know. So yeah, that's one of the pro. That's easily one of the problems I had with part two. I and I'm pretty sure it happened back in part one as well. So yeah, Sally, I think that's still that's going to be a staple in this series. But yeah, other than that, overall, I did enjoy part two. Um, like I said, I don't know if I would say it's better than part one. And is there gonna be a like another season? Is there gonna be a part three or season two, season three? I don't know. Guess we're just gonna have to wait and see. Because I think I think there is still more story to adapt as well. But, uh, we'll just see how it goes. Like I said, in Ari Ferretta, well, and I think, like, other re live reactions as well. It really just depends on how the source material does and how the studios think. And what what the, what, do you, what the studios think they should do. Like, it all depends on the sales and the reception. Um, but yeah, other than that, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Twitter. Support me on Patreon. Link in the description down below. And I'll see you guys next time.